All right, guys. It wouldn't be a, wouldn't be our marathon if we didn't have audio issues or just having some some kind of audio, some kind of tech issues. Just give us a second. We'll be hopefully have this right out. Well, obviously. You're using the media source, right? Yes. Okay. There's audio. It's going through? Of some kind. Yep. Alright, well, uh... King and James, if you want to do your introduction while Slower tries to get why the video loads. Yep, the video's there. We're live. Yes, so. Alright, all right, just give us a countdown when you're ready, guys. Okay, so I'm incredibly sorry about that. Uh, tech issue. Um, anyway, I'm King McCut. It's nice to see everybody uh, in the uh, stream. Um, I will be the runner for today, and with me I have. Hello, everyone. And he's just somebody from the uh, Discord. Um, if you're looking to pick up the game, I'd highly recommend it. It quite often goes on sale. Um, but anyway, until then, uh, the important thing with this one is we do not start from selecting New Game Plus. Uh, the main reason we end up doing that is because I wanted as many people as possible to be able to speedrun the game, including people on the PS4 who, um, thanks to that, we end up running it from first input uh, to basically allow everybody's game. Um, So, everything will be happening very, very quickly, which is the reason I have a co-commentator, to help with uh, reading chat and stuff. So, without further ado, let us uh, get ready in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, this is Zanky Zero Last Beginnings. It was a JRPG made by making um, Dangan Wampa, so Spike Chunsoft. And we are really hoping in the community for a second game. It's unlikely to happen, but what can you do? So, first things first, I'm going to take this menu slowly, because if I mess this up, I can't do anything about it. There. Uh, it says, oh, you can change it later. You have to beat chapter one to change it. You can't change it right away. Which is fun. Sunday, <laughs> I was standing on the uh, But no, it... Came out this year in the West on PS4. Um, it came out last year in Japan on the Vita. So again, a Vita release from very late last year expected that it's not gonna be too popular, unfortunately. Uh, Zero the Hero says good luck. She is. And yeah, you do actually have to go that way because you have to pick up the water bottle. Even though we don't have to uh, ever worry about stamina or stress or anything like Whoa. that in the speed one because we have uh, on difficulty one. Cheers for the look. Is this it? So. I have to say. Oh, you go. Uh, no. Then you're probably playing new game because <laughs> um, it inflicts a far a six minute time penalty where you're have all of the enemies come towards you uh, and also basically
girl who happens to be very uh, dainty and uh... Oh, um, the video just went down again, just so you know. Oh! So it's just... It wouldn't be a tech issues, goddammit, what's yeah. going on? So I'm gonna still keep going, because yeah. I would recommend you to pass. Okay, I can just pause on that point. So looks like the video's somewhat back up. Is it? I don't see it on mine. Looking at the yeah. Uh, screen, at the okay, so screen. it's back up. I feel okay. like it's back up now. Of course. So first one, first uh, it's this. Uh, where? Where was I? Oh right, we were going through all of the characters, so we've uh, just talked to, um... Alright guys, apparently the RTMP doesn't want to work with me, so we're going to go ahead and swap over. Just give us one second.
immediately start playing audio because I set it so it's routed through OBS with the new like browser source audio stuff. So it looks like it's up on the page now. So on the stream? Yeah, it's on the stream. It looks like. Cool. I have like delay because I'm using on VLC. Alright, cool. Alright, I guess we're restarting. <laughs> so, yeah. Again, like from the marathon stuff here, yeah, we apologize for this. Um, we sometimes just have tech issues like this, and you'd really hope that it doesn't happen during like the first run, but sometimes it does. But James and King, for the second time, do take it away. Yes. Uh, sorry about that. So again, one starts from first input, which is why I was able to actually load it up into this. Uh, while de-rusting, I'd actually spent like ten minutes getting <laughs> um, timers and everything done. So, yeah. Anyway, this is Zanky Zero Last Beginnings, and we'll be starting off in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. So, again, I guess might as well somewhat start from the beginning for the VOD. Uh, this is Zanky Zero Last Beginnings, and we are going to be playing on any percent... Uh, sorry, we're going to be running a any percent new game plus... Difficulty 1. Um, we start on first input because I want everybody who can possibly play the game to stream it even on PS4. Um, and difficulty 1 is not on the Vita version. So if you can stream on Vita games, you need the PS4 release or the PC release. Sunday, July. Uh, so I am uh, King Imukut, Um and with me I have my co-commentator... James Best, hello. For the third time! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It, it happens. Um... Fingers crossed for not a fourth. <laughs> well, it, it definitely shouldn't, um, because I know my tech stuff is going to be fine. Yep, and, uh, Shrick saw... Sh sh did yeah. Shrick saw... There! <laughs> Shrick Shaw in the chat <laughs> says the audio sounds a lot better. Yeah. So, the current world record for this game is um, a 146, I think it's 28, is this or it? something. <laughs> and I only know that because the previous world record was a 149, and I accidentally broke it by being good uh, when de -rusting. So, yeah, um, as, can, as you do, there was only like one or two bits of tech which I've constantly forgot to put into marathon ones. So it'll be nice to actually show those off uh, for a wider audience, even though it's, like, really basic. <laughs> um, so we're basically showing off all the characters that we're going to be enjoying. So we have Rio, who is a uh, guy who quite likes uh, ropes um, and everything to do with uh, being bound. Um, you'll find out why in his backstory when we play as him. And here we have Dr. Mamoru Ichiro, who is a very buff doctor. And then we have a glutton called Yuma Masahiro. Of course, uh, she is one of the fat cats, uh, both literally and metaphorically, being both witch and uh, a bit um, overweight. Next, we have the flower girl, Winko Suzukino. Uh, she's very Kino. Ha! Yeah. So... We are basically having to, uh, we're having to create a toilet because we woke up on a desert island. We have no idea why the hell we're here, and we're going to make sure that we can at least uh, make it somewhat livable. So, of course, first port call, get some materials. And this also happens to be the tutorial for how to pick stuff up. I'll hold it. Even though that was also used for the picking up of a bottle. Yeah, you know. Here is actually the uh, fighting tutorial. It's one of two. Uh, normal enemies you'll see, and now we have the farmer and the cop, because of course everything has got to be very stereotypical. And cop is best girl. You can't change my mind on that. And we pick that up just because we can. And there. Yeah, the, the fights on difficulty one are a joke. We have no need to fight at all. Um, it's enjoyable, uh, but it's it is really a joke of a category. So that's the reason I speed run it because I am a joke. <laughs> All relatable. Yeah. But no, the first time I even picked it up was because I wanted to end up playing, uh, be in a marathon which is dedicated to bad and obscure games. Um, of course, it's a bad category in an obscure game, so what better kind of game to play? 
Uh, I remember getting into this game. I got into it because of uh, Danganronpa. I actually got... they made that, I want to check out that. Yeah, I actually got into it by just pick, uh, seeing uh, the box art on the uh, in the game, and I thought, oh, this looks beautiful. Let's actually check what's uh, up with this. Oh, it's a dungeon crawler! And a semi-real-time face one as well as first person. This is right up my alley. I wish there was more of these. Uh, the beautiful toilet. Yeah. What's this? The one that's uh, easy to uh, hit max rank with, which is pretty nice, but it's still a toilet. Now we need to make a clone. Why? Well, because there's a cloning machine with us. What? Yeah, the Accent machine makes us get cloned. Um... And all of the characters, they can become old. Like, that's the reason some of them are different ages right now. It's because they can become old, but they can also become young. Um, so, we'll explore that not too long. Uh, not in, like, not much later. Because it uh, gets explained to us once we enter the first dungeon. Which will be very soon. So if you guys like games where you can watch kids get beaten to death with uh, tentacles, this is your game. Uh, or even a bit of monkeying around with uh, some of the stories. The game is, however, and it should definitely be noted, somewhat uh, dark, um, thriller-wise. Um, if you don't mind getting a bit of a spooks, uh, then it's definitely a game that's really nice. And here's actually some of the first tech that we have, and of course, first thing we have is there, Let's take and then this. there. That's still plenty for what we I need it for, it. but that's honestly not great. And then here we're basically routing how far we've got to go. Because we can technically go all the way around, but that's slow, so we're going to go here. Ow. And then we have our first... Oh, there's a, there's a puzzle or something. What are we going to do? Uh, and why is our guy falling... Like, from a big building. What's happening? Oh no. Well, the puzzle is basically... Not pick that up, hit Let's the switch. Um, and then... We're gonna see that there's a major difference between Danganronpa and this, where the characters don't have Pepto-Bismol running through their blood. Instead, they actually have, uh, blood. And, uh, Winker becomes a bit, uh, holy. Uh, Vertigo3 asks, how's everything going? Uh, so far, perfectly fine. Mostly because nothing major has even happened yet. <laughs> uh, ask me when we end up getting to uh, Chapter 5. Um, that's the best bet. Uh, because So, of course, the first place we're going to end up going is inside of the Mashahiro Garden Tower, which is our first dungeon. Um, the first place we were at, of course, wasn't too weird, but... You know. Now there's a bit of tech that I have been planning on uh, figuring out in a while, where basically it'll speed everything up for us. So, well, what? Where? What? We can extend the sugar bane? No sugar bane. What? What? What is that? Well, there's a mechanic in this game where if you die to something, um, you will unlock an ability called a sugar bane. It's Basically, a way for your character to gain resistances um, and stat bonuses from their unfortunate and timely demises. Um, more often than not, it's caused by death. But the main reason I'm actually running on New Game Plus is be uh, caused by death by enemies. But the main reason I'm running it on New Game Plus is because of the bonus to how long each character can live. Uh, normally, every character has 13 days to live. Because of course it is, it's 13, unlucky 13. Um, but we have a total of uh, 18, I think it is. Uh, this comes in handy because the main reason we die in any game, uh, any percent new game plus uh, in difficulty one is old age. Um, there's also a day system, which is more or less how the entire world's RNG is based. Um, and because of that day-night system, I'm not 100% sure if it's done by, based on steps or how long you're in each part of the dungeon. But I th think uh, it's based on a mix of the two. Um, because of that, 
along with the death system, there's also doors that can open up and close up with you um, during the day uh, because of that. And they're one of the major contributors to how well the one's going to be late game. Uh, middle game, there's two places where if you get stuck in those places, it's awful RNG. There's two which is, well, there's one which is somewhat awful, and then there's only one decent one. Um, and again, that's chapter five. That's why I said come back to me with, in chapter five. So we don't have to worry about that door because we opened it up when we ended up opening the front door as well, which is nice. Uh, they just say basically, oh, we know you don't want to have to run all the way around again, so here. And there's Welcome something which, the something you can't forget is pick up some of that. You don't need all of it. Uh, I was just picking up all of it because it's nice to have the extra. Um, but in the long run, you only need we, I think. Um, and here's actually the first encounter of the day-night system where they get old. They aged. And of course, this game is pretty hefty on the tutorials. And then here is the reason that aging is a pain. Every single chapter, except one, has these doors. These doors are based on if all of our characters are alive, and if any of them are dead, it will not open. There's one chapter where that isn't the case, because a character is dead for the entire chapter, so it can't be helped. What are you doing? And we're going to be fairly soon encountering our first case of what on earth is happening here. These TVs will open up... Second case of what is happening here. These TVs will basically show us backstory to each of the characters. Um, so this one, of course, is for Hawato, and we happen to be playing as these characters uh, when these happen. Whoa. Click the button. What is uh, no, there was not a Zangi here. Go. Uh, that was. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm answering uh, Sakura 301, who uh, was okay. asking if there was one in, in the stage you were talking about. No, there isn't. Because your character is dead, um, it's physically impossible for there to be a Zanki hatch, because they're basically the... Oh, wow, that was uh, Shank. Um, they're basically a guard to all of the bosses to make sure that you have all of your characters alive when you end up facing off against the boss. But because of the plot story being, oh, a character is dead, for that entire chapter, you can't do anything about it. So there's no Zanki doors as a somewhat level of mercy. And we're very soon to see our second ever enemy that's normal and that'll be it for the entire game so i think it is in here oh boy it's this one and then it's up here what are you so you can see on the top uh right there's a map and that also includes a little thing that's flashing Let's try activating it. that button there actually opens up the path to the next uh, part of the puzzle uh, and that's the reason i was going to that point second um, and not uh, go into the main part because even though it'd be quicker if I could open it I can't open it I have to use that button and it's here here we go and the puzzle was to get two symbols on there and now we open up the door and we get a encounter with our second and only ever normal enemy. Yeah, it uh, certainly is a very interesting difficulty. Yeah, it's also nice because almost all of the puzzles are given to us. Um, the only ones which aren't, uh, and even then it's uh, only a somewhat aren't, happens to be with um, two parts of the Bellamoir. And this is the reason we picked up some items, is to throw them onto that, so we can get through. And it's my boy. <laughs> is there any base expansion that you need to do, or is it all unnecessary? I believe you only need to make the first toilet. Yeah, we only have to make the first toilet. Um, <clears throat> if you're wanting to play super duper ultra insanely safe, then you could technically make the bathroom, uh, the bedrooms as well. 
However, since this is difficulty one, we have no reason to do that in the slightest. Um, if we were playing on difficulty two or above, which still needs routed, and there's somebody who's planning on helping out with that, um, then yes, we will actually be having to make uh, stuff as well. Uh, specifically the workshop and the cookery uh, area. I remember uh, really avoiding making anything because my game kept crashing whenever I went to the uh, to the workshop area. Uh, thankfully that doesn't happen on uh, PS4, so yeah. That was on PC, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some weapons in that you can only make which are stupidly powerful, so it's um, it will effectively be required. Here is our first boss. Um, it happens to have been Halito's boss, of all things. So uh, that's kind of neat. And he's got a chair and uh, a tie. Um, so we just run up to him and beat him in the face. Because nobody needs a chair or a tie. Don't you wish you could do that to your boss? Yeah, it'd be nice. But, of course, we don't want people to do that, now, do we? Were you watching when I used my special... So there we had the text box basically saying, Oh, by beating a boss you get some uh, things called Extend Coins. If you die and you need to revive and you don't have enough points, uh, you can use these Extend Coins to uh, revive. It's not needed. You don't ever have to worry about them. Um, especially in New Game Plus, you basically have more than enough money. Uh, sorry, points uh, in your Extend Machine to not need to worry about it. And then here we are for... Chapter 1's end, and next we're going to be playing as Zen the Farmer. This is going by so fast. <laughs> yeah, um, generally a good one is all of the first set, all of the floors, but the last one take one. 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. Second to last one I normally give about 15, and then the last one I give 20. Stage 7 is a huge pain, because of all the shadow monsters that teleport when you're not looking. Only on the difficulties above uh, 1. That's very true. That's in, very true. In fact, only it's not even on difficulty 2, neither. I don't think there's any shadow monsters. Oh, the shadow monsters. If you don't know what we're talking about, the shadow monsters are a class of monster which are basically covered in, like, a black fog. And they are actually creeping angels with the fact that they only attack or move when you're not looking at them. Um, chapter 7 is not nice because there's not many much, there's not much space and it's almost all single paths. So if you can't, oh right, it is actually forward. <laughs> um, so if you can't tell, the co-commentator hasn't actually seen the one before. Um, I had asked if he, uh, if he had because I wanted to have somebody who's uh, first impression is uh, there. And now of course, because we can see um, Haruto, basically get his introduction uh, now, because of course we were playing as Halito, so you can't really see him when you're playing as him. And now you can change the background music. Which of course we don't need to worry about. The main thing there is changing the difficulty. Um, one of the things I do hope to eventually have happen is that we will have uh, somebody being able to run on uh, if not all of the difficulties, because difficulty 5 is mad, um, at oh. least difficulties 1 to 4. Um, and the difficulty changing system, you have to get to chapter 2 to even unlock the ability to do so. And I was hoping that it would be more of a, this is the lowest you can possibly go uh, in the one sort of thing, rather than a... This is the level of difficulty you have to play as for the entire thing. Yes, yeah, soccer. I uh, didn't like the mimics either. Those were a pain. And how bad is difficulty five? Really bad. Pretty much everything kills you in one hit. It, let's put it this way. Even the people that are very, very, very good in this game spend 30 minutes plus on the final boss. Most bosses take 10 minutes at best. At, um, at oh. worst. So, yeah. Here's our first case of the puzzles actually being given to us. We have an item that we have to put down on there. Uh, and we just get given it. Watch out. So we don't have to worry about it in the slightest. Gotta push the button down because that unlocks the door to the next area. And some of the time save that I'd actually... 
found out when I was doing the D-West is you don't have to actually add people into the party for this chapter or the chapter the chapter oh. before because it automatically gets given to you um, at certain points. So let's see the day system is... it's not got awful. Um, all of those characters should be perfectly fine, um, at least for this day. And of course, here's our first... oh, you have to use the Zankitor. It's very rare that you'll ever encounter more than two. I think it's only in first chapter and second chapter. Um, cause all I think the there's four in stage five, but you, won't, you only have to use one. Uh, no, we don't have to use... Because uh, you have to get, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to get to the middle area with the boss. Yeah, technically there's four, but that's more because of the layout of chapter five. It's yeah. heavily RNG dependent where you end up. Um, so there's four outer areas, one central area, which, well, you'll see when we get to that sort of point. Um, and there's the central areas where the boss is, and it's not very nice, and it's a bit painful. Um, so they've got four of the Zanki doors to basically stop you from getting out um, into the boss by accident from the wrong area, um, without triggering the needed stuff. So we're all already, ah, we're already halfway through chapter <laughs> uh, th two, and then ah, what are you doing? Two, three, four, five. Here we go. Now you're meant to go all the way around this uh, floor to get uh, puzzle parts to answer a puzzle right here. We don't need that. We're speedrunners. We know the answer. I don't know which is faster, left or right. I'm fairly sure it's left. Oh, uh, sorry, right. Which the answer is nine. So we do two and seven like to get nine. And this entire chapter is very, very linear. Alpha Lampo says, I hear Solo Zen is actually pretty strong. Um, somewhat. It's much more because he's fairly, like, strong as a character because he's a farmer so he's got that sort of thing happening to him anyway however it's still playing as a single character so if he dies you're going to lose money effectively there's no way around it because you lose uh, points um, when your entire party is wiped out if you only have one person in the party you lose points of course and then you have to bring more people back into the party anyway so having a single person is not really too good yeah. Uh, I need to push the button oh, well. to open the door, and it also turns off the arrow. And now we are on the final floor, I believe, of uh, this chapter. Part of me would like to explain the story in between the, during the videos, but like, it's really dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not just dark, it all goes very quick. Um, you have any options to set it so, oh, it only does like one or two, but you can also just basically set for the full page. So the curry thing there, it's basically... You can open up different doors and pathways by putting on different ones of the of the switches. You just need one to give power to the Zanki door. That's it. If that's all you're really caring about. And now here's and our second boss. The grandfather. And he's dead. Rest in peace, grandfather. He's a white old monkey though, so yeah. Mama is pretty good at carrying heavy things, though. I agree. Uh, is, uh, my, if you need anybody course. to carry, if you need oh, anybody to good. carry anything, though, you just put them in the back and then chuck everything onto them. That's very true. And funnily enough, that'll actually come into play during chapter six. All right. Uh, believe it or not. So now we are on chapter three, I believe. Yep, stage three. So at this stage, there was a reason I'd done that really funky stuff to open up a weird way um, in Chapter 1. 
you'll soon see why. We have uh no, don't need to save. We are and now we're playing as the cop who I always end up thinking is Donut Girl from Dangan Wampa. Uh, the fun the fun fact is that she's actually voiced by the same person that does Maki Harukawa in uh, Danganronpa. Oh, nice. Yeah. Same with Yuma and Monica Toa from Ultimate Dis Ultra Despair Girls. It kind of to be expected because it's the same development house, so they're obviously going to have same sort of contracts with uh, voice actors and everything. Yep. Oh, the medieval armor. It's technically a set you can use, but if it's a white old hefter of a thing, so it's sometimes a bit too much. So here yeah. we get a tutorial where Zen's basically said, I've used my farming skills to the test, so now we have a garden to make food with, um, which can come in very, very useful. And now we're getting to... Oh, the button's done its thing, and we can now do something. Way too often I've been a bit too uh, enthusiastic and accidentally said, you know what, I'm going to press it right away. Um, without getting told, oh, you need to do this thing. Um, basically, you unlock the ability to make or attach, rather, Cleone, which are the weird tentacle-like things onto your characters. Um, there's two Cleone we actually use in the speed run. One of them we have to use now and we get given to us immediately. And our tasks literally to add on to Let's add the Cleone onto the onto our uh, hero. Remember, kids, parasites are good. Well, uh, at least uh, shows that we'll have to agree so. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, uh, yeah, that's very true, Alpha Lampo, because. Uh... I've definitely done a few solo solo teams, and that's exactly what happens. They uh, don't. A lot of the attacks do not hit. Yeah. On the white side, however, with uh, the battle system in this, the game uh, the game box advertises it as real time. That is a lie. It is real time with a cl uh, with an internal uh, tick system, where all of the characters, uh, enemy characters, will move on ticks. Your characters do not, so your characters innately have an advantage of being able to move, start, basically sidestep them, attack, sidestep them, attack, sidestep them, attack, and not have to worry about it. Ow. Um, yeah, nothing like uh, circling around an enemy and just going behind them and hitting them and then continuing to do that. Yeah. yeah. And of course, because I accidentally ends up hitting, because uh, activating Cleone is a different thing um, to... Uh, normal attacks. You have to hold down the action button uh, instead of the attack button. So sometimes I get a bit confused. <laughs> oh, welcome to the stream, Flavio Gamer seventy nine. Here actually be our first case of what RNG are we going to have with our date lock door system? Um, oh boy! Yes, indeed. So we have um, two paths we can lock go through on this part. One of those paths I do not know well. And I got joined the D-West, so I still don't know it well, because I was basically just going by the seat of my pants. However, considering Zen, uh, all of their HPs so far, it should be fine. Um, this is generally going to be decent if we have... Um, what is it? Let's see. Yep. Yeah. I wanted to make sure it wasn't the awful RNG, because <laughs> um, the a little extra isn't too much of a problem. Um, but basically, one path is down the way I first went. The second path, which is a slightly better path, is down this way. This is the only part of it where the date lock door system matters. Um, there's sort of an extra part, but it's not really that much of a problem at all. Are you talking about stage six? Uh, no. Um, sorry. Give me a sec. Uh, sorry, my mind's falling a blank. <laughs> uh, no, 
No, with stage six, we don't actually have to worry about the date uh, date system at all. Really? Yeah. Because that would be um, getting to the drop down. I'm guessing. What? But no, on stage six, we don't have any worries with the uh, RNG at all. Oh, that's it. The only other time that it matters is if one of our characters happens to die here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which also happened in my PV because Haruto uh, was awful. It, it was literally the first half was terrible, and uh, the second half was passable. I, I got worst uh, RNG spot for stage five, and it was still personal best, so, you know. A fun fact for the kiddos at home. Uh, every time there's a video and there's a person wearing clothes that isn't the character this is about, they're usually the boss. Usually, yes. Or at least the other key character, um, at least during those stories. Remember, kids, clothes make you evil. I mean, I'm kind of wanting to say yes, but at the same time, this game had a bit of controversy when it was coming to the West because of... Uh, Certain scenes with uh, the characters. Um, That's very true. That's very true. I know there was definitely an uproar about that, but personally, I I thought the con the the censorship was actually pretty good. It was very decent and it was very needed. Um, yeah. So we actually have really good RNG because all of the characters are not going to die, and I can say that unequivocally because I know a terrible one of this uh, chapter is three days and we've got to the point where it's possibly gonna be two um, so it should be decent and then here we have yet another part where this is another kind of unique puzzle this entire section is actually it's not bad but only because it isn't heavily RNG dependent what kind of luck you get. So if you're expecting a character to die, one of the best things you can do is actually open up the door that was just... ...back, uh, that way. Which is um. the front door for the major part. Uh, the major part of the subway. And of course, I accidentally went down the one part of my... ...normal save, which I've been meaning to get all of the map stuff for where I haven't got it because the game is weird. Because it's never open for me, ever. <laughs> and then of course, oh, speed one, it's open. Nice. So we don't actually have to close that, but I always close it anyway because I'm so concerned about accidentally falling down that hole, even though it does nothing. <laughs> it will do literally nothing for us. Um, uh, you mind if I just pop in here real quick? Yeah, sure. Alright, so I just wanted to remind everyone, this is No Holidays Allowed, uh, we are a, essentially All Goes Marathon, um, we are benefiting Go Rescue, a non-profit organization to help homeless dogs recover, uh, find new homes. So if you guys would like to help that, make sure to use Explanation or don Explanation Donate, uh, if you do donate, um, you will be able to, uh, meet some incentives that are going to be happening during the marathon, so definitely check them out, um, but, uh, if you guys have, you know, if you guys can spare that, you know, Starbucks for one day, you know, you guys could help out a lot for a lot of these dogs. So I just wanted to pop in, give a little, uh, you know, a little uh, advertisement there. Uh, we'll get back to the run. <laughs> if you want to donate um, without, you know, typing in the chat, you can also uh, type uh, ux 9 um dot de slash nha2019 in your browser address wherever it's a short link that will direct you to the donation page so that's ux9 dot de slash nha2019 and go help the doggos back to you thank you and remember everybody you can also help by adopting um a pets as well doesn't have to be from a specific uh, charity, but they're always in need of basics. So stuff like uh, food, or even just blankets or something like that, or even a loving home. Remember, however, of course, it's coming up to Christmas, so you might be inclined, oh, I'm going to get a friend or family member a uh, pet. Pets are not 
the same as video games or newspapers. Pets are for life. So if you're afraid that you won't be able to com have that commitment, donate something or even, or in this case, money to a uh, charity. So this is actually a really unique puzzle. It's like, oh, there's all these places that we can go, but what on earth is going to be opening up the uh, Zanki door to give it power? It's the light switch. It doesn't do any lights. It just does power to the Zanki door. And, uh, yeah. And it's a pesky little bugger to find. Yeah, it is. It really is an absolute pain if you <laughs> if you don't know what on earth you're doing. And then, of course, this is actually my favorite uh, boss, because in all of these bosses, uh, we always just run up to the enemy and then beat them across the head. Um... Of course, this one. When we do that, we step on a yeah. When we do this, we step on a trap, so we're getting hit constantly by a, a trap. Rest in peace. Very much, little bro. Now, some of you might know some old nursery rhymes. They've already been going for the uh, openings, but. Here's another one for you, ev uh, everybody. It's uh, a bit about uh, London Bridge. Don't oh boy. <laughs> but of course, unfortunately, London Bridge is uh, falling down, and uh, poor old Sachika is. Uh, oh no. This is the first part where the game really gets pretty. Not gruesome, but very much a thriller. Yeah. And it's also one of the major kickstarters for... I'm wanting to say the B-plot, but no, it's... The A-plots are so nicely interwoven that all of the characters' information is more of the B-plot. Which is weird, because that's the main thing that you're actually exploring for the entire game. Yeah. And next... Nearly bit my tongue <laughs> because I really, really love any say, video game that does so diegetic stuff. So diegetic menus, um, for example, the likes of um, not Death Stranding, not Dark Souls, uh, Dead Space. So the Dead Space menus are diegetic menus, I think it's called, where they're very in universe. Well, the main menu in this game is also in universe. And I love it. It's straight up a lovely little thing to have to keep a continuity going really nicely. And of course, this is also where we start having real, quite annoying stuff uh, going down. So, for this one, we have Reckless Skies. We have to play Reckless Skies, and I don't want to. And I also end up using this one to transplant a Cleone. Now we transplant one into Winko, namely Scorching Heat. Uh, this helps us skip a part a lot later on. That's stage six. Yes, that is That's... stage six. Yes, it is. Yep. Um, there's technically a path where you're going to say, oh, I'm going to return back to title. That doesn't work for the cutscene. You have got to die for this uh, next cutscene to work. Um, and I've never seen a time better than 0-0 uh, colon zero five for fast death, unfortunately. So it's always going to take that long. F. Georgie says uh, London Bridge is down is the code name for the queen dying. Yes, it is. Sachka was the queen all along. She's my queen. <laughs> well, she is a really good girl, but uh, I still personally prefer the policewoman because uh, there's something nice about her. So now we get to see a big old ship. Oh no, what's going on here, lads? Well, Yuma's uh, family is very, very rich. They're also very, very powerful, so it's uh, not, much of a ah, not much of a surprise when they own a ship. However, let's skip this cutscene. And then there's this diegetic thing which I love. So this, here, that's the title screen. That's the title screen of the game. And I love whenever any game does that. I really, really love... Sorry. 
I really love cruise ships in games, like those abandoned cruise ship levels. It's always in horror games, always in this game. I'll have to, end up, I'll have to end up putting a bit of money in for the swear. Oops, sorry. So here we have a double path split, so we have two ways we can go. Um, I always end, end up going for one way and then the other because it turns out it might be a little quicker. Um, but I do it just out of force of habit. So we have to go through here into this door. First switch is the one we need and it opens up this door here. So now we can go into a sunken part of the ship. Dying here doesn't matter in the slightest. Uh, and all of the characters should stay alive anyway. And all of the, uh, well, two of the puzzles here are answered for you. This is one of the parts where there's puzzles that are not answered for you. So, on the wall, there is a little information. It's like, oh, here's a whittle for you. Answer the whittle. Uh, you're meant to have the item or get the item that it's asking for and then putting it there. Of course, uh, on uh, this difficulty, it's done for us. So, we can just do that. Whoa. What? Oh, oops. <laughs> oh, that's me being silly. It actually opens up this door here, and then you're going to use these switches here. So I've been lazy with uh, uh, getting the correct answers, so I just turn them all on. On any difficulty but uh, one, it will spawn enemies behind you if you use the incorrect one. Um, Ten. 10-5 says, yo, good luck, King. Cheers. Thank you for the luck. What are you doing? Like, I'm fairly sure the answers to this one's meant to be, like, um, the last two, with it being, like, feet and stop. Because it's, like, something like uh, being stop having to worry and uh, get some com uh, something comfortable on. Ow. And then here... Watch out! And then this is also one of the reasons we picked up more than one item. Um, we need two items, or at least two items that will not break, um, for this next puzzle. So that means we're going to put this down to swap where the order is. We're going to throw this water bottle because that will turn onto this power, pla uh, power pad. Then we can do this. What are you doing? Watch out. Don't want to fall down there by accident, because um, it just loses time. Uh, but the main reason you don't want to actually fall down those is not because of the loss of time, but because if you accidentally fall down there, then you're going to have to probably reset the entire puzzle. So this one is a uh, classic uh, staple of a lot of puzzle games. It's the, if you stand on the button, the buttons around it are going to be opening up or closing, um, basically swapping a state. So it's nice um, and a bit of a pain. That's close. And then here. And there we go. And then there's a hole. You can use an item called a rope to drop down the holes without having any worries. But eh, we don't need to worry about that in the slightest. Oh! Hmm? Rest in peace, everyone. <laughs> Just jump into their deaths. Yeah. But of I... course, there's something a lot worse that's coming up very soon. Oh, yes. But so, fun fact to you guys at home the more you're carrying in this game, the more falls will hurt. Oh, that's how that works. Yeah. Okay. And of course, difficulty one traps and everything don't hurt you in the slightest. And now here's what I was uh, talking about with something a lot more scary happening. The only reason I'm even doing that is because I need to get the XP. Because um, I'm also using this as a save to get all of the skill points. But the main tech is to return to the base. You're basically skipping the entire return journey, which is a pain. Then you can go here, return to the Bellamoir via the menu, which it's a lot quicker. Um, 
No mind no this. Oh, it said saving. What why on earth is the game saving when you do that? Surely you turn off saving. No, the saving doesn't take any extra time, so there's literally no reason not to. Uh I wasn't meaning to equip that, because I need to throw that. There we go. Whoa. And then they're here. And now we have a second puzzle. The main reason we end up going to the first part of the the part on the right of the Belamoir first is because all of the TVs are in their order, so we don't have to worry about um, going to TVs that are out of the way when we could just be going straight forward um, with uh, the puzzle. Uh, it took me forever to figure out you could throw things in this game. Yeah, it took me uh, way too long to figure that out myself as well. Yeah. So, because our characters don't have anything equipped, all of their damage is considered blunt damage. So, we were able to basically bash down that door. Uh, during my first proper uh, playthrough of the game, I actually used the fact that you can fall um, to escape uh, from Kuroski there as a way to basically run around him when he was moving to us, fall down to the next floor, and then just deal with it like that. It works! <laughs> it sounds stupid, but it works! So, yeah. And They're then again, so afraid of something they can just punch once and leave. Yeah. But again, we immediately leave after we after we hit him, because I'm doing it for skill points, not really for a speed one. So I don't really mind losing the extra time. Um, and it also comes in handy with uh, leaving and exiting. You're spawned right in front of where you need to go, so you can just immediately run forward. Ooh, I love this scene. Yeah. This way. So we're actually skipping a ton of this game. Uh, not just the plot-wise, but there's a load of levels you'll never see. Uh, on this one, for example, we've not seen the bottom floor of that submerged ship, for example. We never will. We have no reason to go to that floor, and if you've gone to that floor, you've messed up. A fun, a I take fun that fashion. back, actually. We we do go down there once, but that's to collect the key, uh, key card, and that's because it's really far out from the western part, but yeah. Yeah. So, fun fact for the kiddos at home. Uh, in the last video that was just watched, uh, with the live action, instead of these little silhouetted animations, a character named Terashima is shown. He comes back later. Pay attention yep. to that name. Yes, he does. Best character. No, that's showing me why. Come on. You should know that, mate. Oh, darn it, you're right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so here we have another Zanki door. And every single time we've had one of these, the boss has always been in front of it, but there's there's nothing here. Uh, what? Well, uh... Oh, boy. Just like the door to my brighter future. <laughs> oh, yeah! Here we have uh, the only person who's uh, capable of being equivalent to uh, Kool-Aid guy. Bashing down doors so much. But of course, we can bash down their heart as well. So there's actually a nice little text bug uh, here where the door is tightly shut. Yeah. I wonder what this is. Shut door. It's an open and shut case. Uh, there's no way they could have stolen anything. <laughs> and now here we are at chapter 5. So let's see what kind of RNG we get. So far it's been pretty decent. And it could be absolutely awful. Um, drawing my personal best, the only reason it was Half decent is because uh, one of the characters was old enough to nearly die. I no, really. All right, here goes Rio's stage. 
Yeah. So far, this is actually, like, substantially faster than PB, I believe. Yeah, you're already, like, you're past the halfway point. Yeah, um, I think during the PB, we were at a 50-ish. Um, so again, the main tech that would have saved that three minutes in the first place was returning to base, <laughs> which I've been meaning to do in loads of the runs I've had, but I've just never got round to rerunning it. So that's how major that can be. It's the only time I'm aware of where it's faster. There may be one other time right at the end, but it's still so little difference where it might not be worthwhile. Uh, plus the extra pathing path you can end up making on that is substantial enough to make it not worth it. So you won't actually be seeing any other art uh, returning to base uh, strategies because I'm wanting to test that out off, uh, off, ha off my weapon um, with that. So here we have the most RNG section of the game. Because of course it can be. Sakura301 asks, wait, so how would you do the two girls need to be dead puzzle on difficulty one? I'd assume you go back to the base age. and change the difficulty real quick. Or age, yeah. It's age, but no, in reality we just went away. Just So this is actually the Whoa. second worst. No, I take that back. It is the worst. Oh boy. Um Yeah. I can't actually complete this one. And I have no way to skip the pa uh, the uh, date system. Because we need a OAP to get into that. And none of them are at OAP status. So, let's see. None of them are nowhere near OAP status. So our only hope is basically going to go to all of these parts and hoping that we hit an age uh, gate. Because if we end up hitting an age gate, then we're going to be fine. And this is the worst, along with the one that's right connected to it, that the only way to get to without RNGesus being kind is um, through a path we can't open. So yeah. Luck. So basically this is dead one. It, the, the chance of it might not be dead, but it's... Hey. Mm, we can still complete it and definitely under time, but it's not looking uh, nice. Unfortunately. But no, here. That's all of them, so our only hope basically is to return to base normally. So we want to hope a day change happens? Doesn't look like it is going to. Of course it doesn't. Okay. Oh! Oh, it's not based on the day system. Yeah, it's not. I always thought it was. <laughs> shows, well, how, shows how often I actually care for the one. <laughs> run somewhat saved. Yeah, somewhat saved, yeah. Nice. Um, I thought it wasn't going to be good because of that, so... Hmm. Funnily enough, the second... Like, normally the worst one's not the worst. <laughs> Because it has enough points where... Oh, right, it... Hmm, I know I forgot something. Um, where you can actually just go to the one we have now and get it saved because of it. Um, I can never remember if you have to activate the puzzle information board. So we're going to go activate these anyway. Found it. Uh... The uh, puzzle for this one is getting into the bath. Uh, nope, it's that. And then using the rest system. I think. Nope, okay. Still got to wait, uh, rest more. Yep, got to rest for a while. Yeah, I always end up trying to give it, like, well, every time, uh, that. 10 seconds, but no. Uh, I'm okay, 
Okay, you know what? Let's just leave it for... for one, two, three, uh, five, seven, eight, nine, one. There? There you go. So you know it's been done when you hear the mechanical noise thing happen. I yeah. always hope that it's actually audible, but I have trouble hearing it just in general. Um, yeah, I, I thought this would be a good time to just come in running a little bit more. But... Yeah. We're basically just having to sit in that bathtub and wait for the thing uh, to happen. It's the reason it's the like second best. Um, the first best, of course, is uh, I can't remember what one it is now. <laughs> um, but like that is the second best one. So yeah. Um, get no more enemies. So the Zanki door is now going to be active, which means we can go through here. And we're going to face off against the boss. So time hasn't been like too lost, at least. That's very true. No, what? What? Oh, right. why? Why? It's not that it wasn't finished. It was finished. It was because uh, oh, there's no more spaces for you in this one. This game, man. This game. <laughs> It can be like that. So this is actually the first best one, and it's because of the puzzle here to unlock it is literally the best one to do. I can't remember what the puzzle was. Uh, <laughs> it's basically something really, really simplistic. Uh, like, hit this oh, specific yeah, think, thing. Or... Yeah, you have to throw something over there, and then the air blows. Oh, okay. yeah, it's that one. Yeah. Now it's been done. Now it's definitely been done. And of course, it's closed behind us. Nice. Uh, Found it. I think you're looking at the wrong door. Oh, it was. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also the door to actually open up the side pathing, so it's not too bad. Yeah. Just being blind, as you do. This is how you can tell it's a professional speed one. <laughs> and of course, this is actually terrible because normally you want a second person in the party for this part. Um, because oh, it's a single boss. That'll be easy. It's not going to be too bad. Uh, no, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I'm correct, there's five on easy, uh, on difficulty one, difficulty two. Uh, it might be six, but the way I we've got to six and other difficulties, yeah. Yeah, but the way we've got to do it is press all of these uh, switches to add hot boiling water into the uh, river, and this will basically get them to pop out. And it's nice that he popped out there. So that's a free basic hit for us. Same thing with this one. Here. And now we're basically running around trying to find where the enemies have popped out, so... Because oh. sometimes they can take a bit of time to show themselves, which is not enjoyable. Um... There he is. He's down there. At least he's actually on the decent side to finish on, but he's still really far away from where we need to be. Because um, the ending of this part is a fair distance away. It's up here. This little shop here. And, oh, we have an extend machine, but... Um, oh no. What on earth is that thing? Well, it turns out all of our clones aren't... Uh, they aren't just one. There's also failed clones. 
that spawn. And it's horrible. Really horrible. Oh, hey, we're at 99 people. Only one more, and we get that three digits. We s Oh, 102! Welcome, everyone! I'm glad you all showed up. And now we are on the uh, first uh, chapter, which gets really spooky, and the chapter with the most uh, annoying boss. I'm gonna to fight. Gonna to be fight. basically waiting for the boss. Um, this is the first. It was the first boss, which I said, you know what? I'm not bothering with this anymore. Difficulty one. Let's see what the uh, difference is. Oh, we got a $10 donation, apparently, according to the chat. Ooh, nice! Thank you for those $10, it'll be going to a good cause. Uh, if you don't mind if I just, uh, just pop in real quick to read the donation. Sure. Um, so, okay, so we have $10 from 1056 saying, First donation, let's go all runners. This, uh, this goes to that bonus crosscode run. Um, so... Uh, if you guys didn't know, um, Crossco did recent did get pulled from the backup to the, uh, and um, there is a there was a bonus there's a bonus run. Um, Piku Fire oh. says to uh, speak louder. <laughs> there is a bonus run for uh, the Crosscode. Uh, we still need ten dollars for it. It's still ten ten more dollars even after that this donation. But uh, again, if you guys can spare that, like. Five dollars. Um, you know, it goes a long way. Um, you know, we, we still have, you know we have five days. This is just the first run. Um, I'm not expecting to make, meet that like on the first day. I mean, that would be awesome if I did, if we did, but you know, either way, we're going to get back to the run. In fact, if we do end up hitting the uh, five hundred dollars on the first day, I will be in, I will actually do a special run of difficulty five. It will not be a speed one, but I will do a special one of this game, difficulty 5, the moment we can get into it. It will most likely take a couple of days to beat through it, but if you want to see some th a man break down and cry because of insanity, <laughs> donate as much as you can. Alright, you heard it here, folks. And of yeah. course, just 500 isn't enough, so uh, if we end up hitting uh, 5,000, which would be insane, Holy, that would be insane. I may just end up doing something even more insane. Oh boy. Alright, but uh... Anyway, we'll go ahead and get back to the run. Thank you so much for the donations. 100%, and do. keep them coming. Keep them coming. I can't go there. Ah, oh, the school area. Yeah. Oh, no. This being a pain. There's a reason we have ended up giving... Um, our character here, Rinko, the uh, Cleone we did, and there's a reason we haven't added anybody else into the party, um, which is actually going to come up very, very soon. So there's, oh, a trapdoor. What? What? Ten kilo? What? Yeah, you have to. You have to be a kid, I think. Uh, no. Or use Sachika. Nope. Oh. Oh. It's based on that your total character's weight, so here it actually explicitly says it. We only have one character in our party. Uh, Winko's the lightest, I believe she's 45 kilos. Um, and because of that, she's able to uh, stand on that pressure plate without any problems. You can get a full party, uh, a full front row party uh, to stand on that one, but it's, it's a pain. So, we also use the fact that we're a single person to get through to this one. We end up using the tool room key, so we don't have to worry about the puzzle that's the intended way. And then, after this, we're going to be using Winko again, and this time with her Cleone. Now, there's an RNG section, which can be nice, or uh, it's too tile time loss, which is right, uh, right away on this part. So of course, nobody's going to die, because our extended HP system, and that's the reason we have the extended ages. And this is a bad one, this is two uh, tunnels away, and that's going to notice, oh, there's uh, gym equipment and a pummel horse and some basketballs blocking the path. That's fine. It really is, it's probably fine, it just means this way instead. 
So we go through this door, down, and then along here. And now we use the Cleone we have to break these. We gave her a fire Cleone, so she'd be able to basically knock down those walls without any problems. If we didn't, we'd have another puzzle, very, very similar to the one we ended up having on the Bellum Wild, where if you st uh, stepped on something, it would move the uh, open stuff to closed, and the closed stuff to open that was right beside it, but instead with uh, falling walls. So we can just skip it, and it's a lot quicker and a lot more direct of a path, which is also nice. So even if it didn't skip the puzzle, it's still faster. Let's keep this up. And then here, we flip that so we don't end up falling down this hole. Then we go here, along here, and then through to the next part here. Sakura says, I always hated the date the, the, the date linked walls. I agree. Uh, they're not too bad. Um, most of them are thankfully routed, don't become a major problem. So it isn't annoying. They I always think... pop up when I don't want them to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they always do. I, all, I actually honestly didn't know that they existed until this stage. I was like, why are these things blocking my path when they should be not here? The worst one for me is in uh, the underground, because um, I'm still needing to finish off one part for my complete map completion. So, I can stand on that and then move away. Uh, you can also put down an item if you prefer. I'm just used to uh, stepping on it now, so I don't worry about it. Apologies for the interruption, uh, just a little like note. Um, we had a... I just wanted to say that the Celeste file name incentive is still open. Um, the spreadsheet uh, is pr currently showing it as closed due to an issue with the um, document's um, time settings. It was essentially running back an hour ahead, so I just fixed that. It should be updated within the next few minutes. So that incentive is still up for grabs if you want to name the file that King J is going to be playing on. So sorry about that. Fixed now on the sheet and back to the run. Thank you. So we're actually at the end again, and this boss is annoying. Yep. This boss, at the beginning of it, you heard, oh, winning, 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 somebody's got a phone! None of our characters have a phone. This guy has a phone. That guy is the real boss. The mechanic in this one is the guy with the phone will run away, and the main Cleone uh, will actually come and be a pain. So, we're on difficulty 1, so we don't have to worry about anything like that, so we can immediately kill them. But you can't. If you're playing normally, you are forced um, to have to... It's actually really good, nice. Uh, you're basically forced to find this guy, and you have to hit him. Except he'll ring up the boss and get the boss to come to you, and block you off. There's... Normally, if you're playing this, um, some of the bosses can randomly show up. There's times when you can have five sets of uh, one of the bosses. If that boss appears five times, you have ten enemies. No, sorry, Ugh. eight times. You have 16 enemies. You have to kill every single one of those statues first. If you do not kill any of those, if you do not kill all of the statues, all eight of the other bosses would be perfectly fi uh, fine. It gets worse. Every single time you hit one of them, all eight of the other bosses come towards you. Yes. It's not fun. And of course, here's actually... Oh, our doctor! What are you going to do? You got stabbed. Got stabbed by Stabby McGee. So, uh. Lots more Stabby Stabby. Well, unfortunately, stuff happens. And we're gonna be going. We had to run away. Basically, had to have somebody evacuate with all of our uh, revives. So, we. Uh, all of our. Effectively, body uh, revive chips. So we're gonna immediately run towards our hero, and his revive chip is broken. We we can't revive Haruto. What what are we gonna do? 
Well, this is the introduction to Stage 7. We play as Mamoru Ichiro, who is the uh, guy behind it all, unfortunately. And as it turns out, we're going to have to go through another stage. Not just oh, boy. any stage. My parents meditate. We're going to the part where we can end up facing off against... The Big Bad. The one and only. <laughs> Kurosuke, uh, Kurosuke, Kurosake, Kurosuke, yes, that, that's it. Unfortunately, to revive our hero, we're going to have to kill Kurosuke uh, and take his heart piece. And I also quite like how this one's talking about uh, a black sheep when uh, it turns out we're playing as the black sheep of the uh, cast. All of the nursery rhymes do try and at least have at some semblance of relevance to the character we're playing. Uh, but unfortunately, most of them fall kind of flat. Yeah. There's something here. And even if you're wanting to sing along to them, they don't play fast enough. Uh, the actual text doesn't scroll fast enough, so you can't really sing along fa uh, to them, which isn't fun. So we're going to go to the hospital. Uh, it also happens to be where little uh, Sashika mostly spent all of her time. So it's a uh, backstory between Sashika and uh, Mamoru. Huh? The fun fact for the guys at home, uh, there's a shrine in Garage Island and it actually does do something. Like if you can, you can load an autosave constantly, go to that shrine until you get what you want, and sometimes you'll find partitions which are necessary to get everything built in the base. Mm -hmm. Pretty the, helpful. The shrine is a good luck shrine, um, and you basically have the option of saying, oh, you're going to get some good luck today, you're going to get this, or you're going to have uh, some pretty awful luck, I'm afraid. Um, normally it doesn't matter unless you're having to go for items. Um, most of the battle mechanics in this are kind of a joke once you just start doing uh, yeah. charge attacks. Huh? So I always I'm end up pushing both of these buttons, just because I like to. Um, I'm not too sure why I started doing that, but I just kind of did, and I haven't stopped. Um, but by pressing both of them, the shut doors on both ends won't close. Um, which actually isn't needed. Uh, if you're expecting any character to die, you can just push that button there, and it will actually open up the gate. So... Are we going to get bad luck? Are we going to get good luck? Let's find out. So far, good luck. Uh, this way, and let's keep that open. Because way too often I want to end up going and closing that, because it freaks me out. Because this is the only floor where you will have enemies randomly cloning. Is this and I don't like it. This is honestly the spookiest huh? chapter. <laughs> um, so yeah... Having that just happen is nice. No. This way, I think. It is. So, there's one thing which I don't like about this one. And you have to go a long way around on the floor, which seems like you can just skip. Um, this is because of a keycard puzzle. So we just collected a keycard for this floor up here. And there's Terashima. There he is, yes. But this is of course this backstory about, oh, hey, this is who Terashima is, so it's not major. We don't have to worry about it. Oh, uh, I forgot this one's the floor where we don't have to worry in the slightest about if any character dies. <laughs> Nice. So, we go here, we pick up this laundry. We go down here, along like this. And we need to chuck this laundry onto this, because this is where basically that text thing says, oh, put any uh, used laundry down to there so we can uh, get rid of it and uh, clean it. And of course, we get a uh, bit of laundry to do that with. I have actually gone, shall we? and I've just done it again, so quickly that we end up breaking the... Oh, you meant to stop and uh, have a cutscene here, uh, part. And then all of a sudden... 
Flusuke. And he's dead. So I just kill him to get him out of the picture. Um, I think. Yeah, I use this. Yeah. There's something here. And then I end up running back around here to get uh, that key card. But I will intermittently go between level uh, 3B and level 3C. Um, now on this floor, and this floor only, it's like, oh! It's the same sort of puzzle as last time. Oh, the opens, the exit's open. Don't go down that way. If you do, you'll be uh, stuck uh, shortly afterwards because you're needing a level four key card, which you can only get on this floor. Um, uh, it is more than possible to get both level one, two, and three's key card, um, but you don't really need to do want to do that speed one this one it's a hidden uh, patch on the ground which unlocks that uh, exit door and then it's this one here Don't know. to grab a key card Let's have a look, shall we and now we just run back the way we came Sakura says I remember my friend end up using the Ruby making some die. Ew. your friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But the question is, did you end up using... Did he also do the exact same sort of thing when he was on the Belmois or not? Because... Uh, he, uh, he apparently went back to the Belmois to just take the ruby from that old puzzle and use it in that one. And that's this actually one. pretty smart. <laughs> so with this one, you have to go all the way around the long way. Uh, this one, nope, it's this one. If you're needing any strengtheners, they're all in there. They do respawn, but I'm not too sure when. And there's also a, uh, oh, it's a boss in, I'm going to do it because it's Marathon. There. It randomly spawns one of the enemy uh, main bosses. So, yeah, if you want to grind, you can end up using the hospital. It's honestly one of the better places to do so. Uh, it's still... Having to go into the hospital though, so eh, it's not. Yeah. Wait, and I've just went the wrong way. <laughs> nice. So here Careful. is the place where we ended up going all the way around. Yeah, for yeah it's one always key been card. Going for me. Yeah. Uh, it... the... Yeah. Boss in that room. Yeah, I'm fairly sure it can change. Um, but I believe the first one is set to be gluttony, huh? so. And we went all the way around for that one key card, for that one door, to the uh, final floor. So the rooms with the stripes on them means that your characters will constantly get stressed a bit more and more as the time goes on if you stay in that room. This is a mechanic that's barely ever used. <laughs> and for this one, we can just basically say, oh, there you go, done. Scary room. Ooh. Ooh. And it's not just, if, if you notice on the minimap, there's also parts where there's uh, triangles showing up. Those triangles are actually uh, danger. They're hazards, hazard floors. And unfortunately you're saying the, this mechanic is hardly ever used. That's pretty much this entire game in a nutshell. Yeah, that's very true. I I can't say I ever really used the Cleone much on a regular playthrough. Yeah, I never hardly used them at all. The only reason I've ever used any Cleone is for the speed one. So, yeah. yeah. There is one that can spawn strengtheners, uh, but it puts your character to 99 uh, Cleone stress, so it's not really worthwhile. Yeah. Thankfully, he came to me first frame, but it's not nice because I still need to go up to the uh, TV screen. There's something here. Oh wow! Oh, this is looking like it is definitely going to be world record. Holy hell! Really? Yeah. Huh. Even with stage five. Well, stage five wasn't too awful. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, um, 
because again, it's yeah, the first stage that we end up on. It's okay because it actually gives you a fair amount of the ability, uh, like a uh, plot moving forward points. Um, <laughs> it's actually why the worst stage can also be one of the best. Oh, wait, right. Western Shore isn't directly to the exit. Um, because if you have an old character, um, you can actually get away with doing all of the checkpoints in the worst stage, which is the one with the middle island, and the puzzle is basically, oh, use a pearl of the sea. Um, it gives you a load of um, points where you can basically advance the story, and then right next to it, there's the second point, which advances the story file as well. <laughs> Um, so what's the world record time again? A one forty six twenty, uh, like twenty six or something. So uh, we might be seeing history happen today again. <laughs> I can't see anything. You can actually check it if you are in the Discord. If you go onto PBs, uh, the PB text channel, I yeah. did post it there. And, uh, oh, here we're established that, uh, Kurosuke's actual, you know, personality is in Haruto. And this is brought up never again. Never again at all. And it's absolutely a shame. But again, that's the story of this entire game's everything. Yep. So the world record time was 146.26.36. So, yeah. Uh, considering how quickly I've recently been doing these, that's definitely going to be well under. It may even end up becoming... 1.30? Maybe. It's more than possible, considering everything I've seen so far, so... And this one, you can just immediately go on, which is nice. <laughs> now, this one, if you've ever played this one properly, uh, you'll know it's a pain. <laughs> there's an RNG... There's one thing where the date-locked system can be a godsend or hell. And, well, we'll be finding out very, very soon. It's yeah. interesting how you never play as Sachika in any chapter and huh? twice as Haruto. I agree, I was actually expecting to play as Sachika for this chapter, but you never do, and that's explained, you know, late into it. Why they yeah, that. very late into it, but at the same time, it's, it's not too wild. Um... So there's a system in this one where there's doors which are locked and you have to get disposable, that's the keyword there, disposable uh, keys. Um, let's first see what RNG have we got. We've got best. So I'm closing this and we're not leaving this floor at all uh, because we have two things we need to do in this floor. One of them involves grabbing this. Look, and we? then another one, well, three things, now that I think about it, three things. Um, so we're going through here, twist, twist. Uh, you can see all the things, oh, what, six blank diamond, what's that mean? <laughs> Nothing for us. Whoa. If you're wanting to play this game, and I oh. highly recommend you do, then there's stuff you can get in this Whoa. which will... Uh, um, let you see the true end and the true plot um, and backstory. Uh, you need to answer the puzzle right at the end to get to the true end, but we don't need to do that, so we skip it. And speaking of that, there's also little notes you can pick up around the areas, which kind of tell a little bit of the backstory. To get the final one of that, you do actually have to answer the puzzle. Yeah. So yeah, it's... Eh. And the main reason we do hope for the RNG system is that door there, that has a 2. That means it's locked by a level 2 keycard. Except that level 2 keycard is used to get another level 2 keycard. Can you see the problem? <laughs> <laughs> so, read the danger sign, click that. You have I'm going to got to read the danger sign before clicking it, where something will fall down. Careful. And then we're going all the way around here. Because we need a single item that's on this floor. And then we're gonna go... Grab this. 
Uh, this one, I believe, is... Yep. I'm going to act then, go here. Like this. This one, I don't think anybody has seriously, unironically found the correct answer by knowing it. It's something where everybody's basically blindly done it, nice. so yeah. Then for this one, it's... Uh, right, this is one with different kinds of buttons, and it's... This button here. Is this it? Uh, no, that's the exit. Don't need that one. And we want the level C clearance key here. Uh, no, yeah, you do it. Wanted to... I nearly messed up. I nearly messed up the entire reason we went this way. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Last minute jitters. Yeah, indeed. And everybody is going to be perfectly fine. So that's actually really nice. The only one we'd have to worry about would be Flower Girl, but she's got six days. So... Oh, we fell! Oh no! I always open up this door, even though I know it's this one, because I've messed up a couple of times during marathons, and it's been annoying. So, yep. You need to go down there for a level 2 clearance key. Seems I can't just force it open. Is this it? Yeah. Because we've done that, we've actually skipped using a clearance key, which I think there's like five of, but two of them are used for really, really pointless side stuff, which we don't need to do. So that's the reason we do the entire spin around, huh? so we can save that one thing. Is this it? Whoa! Careful! And now I always end up doing this first, even though it's not part of the plot yet, because. I don't want to end up accidentally using the key when I don't need to. Um, plus, we need to get that way anyway. Um, but it'll be a lot better if we use it when we've got all of the keys. So, yeah. Oh no, Sachiko lost her arm! What's happening? Oh no. Well, it turns out Dr. Terashima, the mastermind, was in her arm the whole time. <laughs> Get over that. Yeah. <laughs> and a bit more new tech, actually using the go to place uh, thing, because, uh, yeah, we can, so why not? And now we have to actually go down into the uh, area here. So, oh boy. Man, just another Wednesday. I agree, 10 5. So. Ah, that's uh, that's annoying. We're gonna have to pick up a random item um, for part of this. So here, yeah, go down, click back. There. But thankfully, I think. Oh, um. No, actually, we don't. Now that I think about it, because we're gonna pick up another item because uh, it opens up a path to use something to get the final key card that we're going to be needing. So yeah, we'll be fine, actually. Don't you just hate it when your prosthetic arm just jumps out of your body and just goes <laughs> off on its own? This is the only time when we can't start skipping immediately the uh, Extend TV stuff, unfortunately. Um, so we're now playing... Uh, we're now getting uh, Shin Godzilla uh, along with us. Um... Because throughout the game we've had two characters, Sho and Mirai, acting as TV hosts, uh, effectively saying, Oh, look at all of this kind of weird stuff that all of these characters in history has. Eh, it's not too weird. It's also pretty nice that we opened up that before we got the cutscene, because that means when we, open, uh, when we go forward, we can immediately move. So that's nice. Let's Who the heck gets cable out in the middle of the oil rig? Terashima. He is yeah. God. Well, yeah. Uh, but even then, it's literally own broadcasting stuff, so it isn't eh, too weird. And these next two floors, I love. They're interwovenly linked, and they get us immediately two key cards uh, that we need. And that's actually the last two that we need. So we have to go all the way around, uh, which unfortunately is a bit of a faff. But we need to do that so we can open up these two doors. And we do that because... We need uh, that level two key card, look, shall we? And then there's another uh, point of us purposefully falling 
I'm going to activate it. And this gets us down to level four. And then we have to run all the way down here. All the way. And then this is the reason I forgot that we were going to be safe. I'll hold that. Because we have to put that there. And we can unlock here to get a final oh, key card. There's something here. Huh? You know, 10-5, I like to think that Terashima sat in this very oil rig watching The Simpsons. Because even after World has ended, The Simpsons is still going and it will not die. Yeah. Seems I can't just force it open. So we're about to actually enter a point which is, um, huh? Careful. uh, not fun, but not annoying. There's a point where we've got to wait. And it's not just, oh, we've got to wait for a little bit. It's, we've got to wait for a minute. Whoa. It's literally the only respite you have during, a ma uh, during, an actual, during the game where you can look at Careful. chat. Because it's a very, very, um input heavy huh? game unfortunately and the mo moment you get sidetracked is the moment you start banging into walls and the characters start saying ow 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 ow, ow. ow. <laughs> i keep forgetting that you can spam through those with x oops whoa and then here's the second one and we have to fall down again <laughs> and then that's it. There. I always press both of them. There. Careful. You have to open up this path, and then we wait. We basically are just waiting for that door to open. So, how has the trap been exactly? It's been pretty good. Oh, we're at 149 people. Hello, 149 people. Mm-hmm. Remember, this is a charity marathon for a uh, dog rescue center. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it should actually Go be rescue. saying... Thank you. And every single penny that you end up donating to them is another, is another penny that's going towards some help for animals. And don't we all love animals? Especially, like, cute little dogs. So feel free to donate... Um, there's a link, um, I believe, on the stream, and you can also use the command exclamation point donate Whoa. to uh, get a link as well. Sorry to hear about your cold, Yari Deki. I hope it jumps off a bridge. That's a bit much. Eh, uh, colds deserve pain. They do no, they... deserve... I'll, I'll tell you what they do deserve. Uh, strepsils. Good for your throat. That's very true, that's very true. Other cough medicine uh, suppliers are available. Hello, Sian or Sean, or I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. But hello. So, I really should be putting a second okay. character into my party. Um, because there's something that's coming up fairly soon. Um, so, we're actually somewhat close to the end, might I also add? Um, normally, it's about five minutes. Five, six minutes, so... Whoa. We have to throw something that doesn't break twice. That's actually the reason why I was something worried here. that I didn't have enough items. So we go here. It's hard to believe we're almost done. Yeah, it is. Careful. Oh, the the clock at the the clock in the corner changed from uh, two hours to one hour and thirty minutes. That's a bit. Unfortunately, that's way too optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Um. There, like that. Don't want to fall down that hole. You want to go through here, like this instead, though. Uh. So, what actually is the time right now? Uh, one hour and three minutes. Let's have a look, minutes. shall we? It's... Yeah, that should potentially be sub-40. It's definitely going to be world record. There's no way I can mess this up now, <laughs> honestly. I'd have to do something spectacular to mess up uh, world record. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so as I was saying about having all of the uh, the puzzles, well, the puzzles are here. There's text messages you can get which basically say the password is this thing, and you have to answer the password using that um, using a decryption device you get and all of those uh, symbols. And that's only for the final thing. We can just basically press anything we want and then say yes, that's our answer, and it'll open up the path for us. And we are now at the final two bosses. Hmm. Oh boy. Yeah, we aren't under we aren't overestimate at all. The original estimate was uh and two now it's hours. An hour, now it's zero. Now it's two. <laughs> yeah, it was originally two hours. Um I can't believe you went over the estimate of zero seconds. <laughs> Um, but I originally submitted that when the uh, world record was a 149. Because, again, it's 149. It's some of the RNG, and if you mess up with some of the stuff, it can waste up to 10 minutes. And then we're facing off against two final bosses Sho and Mirai. Oh no! Such wonderful build up for something that's gonna die in one punch. Yeah. And it's a shame because they're some of the best characters as well, but I miss. Nice. So, of course, one punch. And that wasn't the reason I wanted the second character. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No. They weren't the final, final boss. You can skip nothing there, and I don't like it, but I also love it. It's stupid. So, yeah. But now we're off against the real bad guy. And the reason I'd like to have a second car uh, party character is I can immediately hit him right afterwards. But that's the final boss. It's not done yet, though. The timing finishes at the start of the credits, so there's still about ooh, two or three minutes, unfortunately. And Sachika's died. Oh no. Rest in peace. She's just dead. Best, like, best girl is dead. I feel like that sometimes. I really do. Sachika! For all marathons, I end up just slowly going through it because it's it's a nice dramatic uh, moment. But then they entirely ruin it. This ending goes on for a very long time. <laughs> it's not that it goes on for a very, very long time, but it just completely kind of ruins some of the fun. And like, you're kind of honestly wanting a depressing ending. Um, but yeah. 10-5, ten, ten I can't believe you don't have any attachment to the characters after the single hour and 37 minutes you've known them. <laughs> They're all we so be good. Get, uh, also, get ready on time. Um, to whoever's dealing with the clock. I have a thing of I always let the credits play for any of the speed ones, and I'd like to request that that's also done. But. It's. Time! That's a 138.02, I think it was. Um, there it goes. <laughs> nice. And also just, oh, it's just completely clear the time, so that's going to be good. <laughs> but no, that was a 138... Uh, something? 138.02, I think it said. So that is world record. Just casual world record, as you do. It's nice. Now, if you beat the game 100%, uh, you get, you can get Japanese ending. Really? Yes. However, the game's uh, English ending is really nice. It's, it's a proper banger, which is the reason I like to let the entire thing end it, uh, go through. This cat 
casually achieving world record. Well, it has you too. It's not hard. I mean, I'm the only one, or so. It's more PB, but. Uh, but yes, so, if you've enjoyed the game, I highly recommend picking it up even casually. And I would also highly recommend donating to our charity. If we end up getting $500 by the end of the next 24 hours, so from the start of next one, will be when the, I'll be starting the sort of 24 hour time limit. If we get $500 by the end, I will be doing Zanky Zero Difficulty 5. It will not be a speed run, but you will be able to see a man cry. Because it's hell. It is utter hell. <laughs> it certainly is. But I'd highly recommend doing it. 100%. I still need to beat Difficulty 5. I'm on the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck on the 30 minutes of uh, pure hell. Oh, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. And if we end up hitting 5,000 by the end of the marathon, I will be doing something a lot more insane. Straight up, I will be doing something which... Is honestly... nutty. So yes, if you're wanting to see that, I would highly recommend donating as much as you can. And it's all going to a very, very good cause. Yes, indeed. No blindfold, because some of the stuff I can't do with blindfold, because it's... Eh. I mean, you can just hear, ow, ow, to know where you need to go. And then I die. <laughs> it will literally just be a guy dying constantly, so it isn't not going to be diffi uh, blindfolded difficulty 5, but it will be do it will be something stupid. It may not be with Zanki Zero, but it will be doing something as insane. Most likely, every single Spike Chunsoft game oh. in release order on hardest difficulty. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I can't guarantee that because I don't own all of them, but I will try my best to get every single <laughs> one of them for that, so yes. Remember, we're, uh, all of our donations are going to be going towards a charity which is dedicated to helping rescue and uh, uh, house abandoned, uh, well, uh, lost and abandoned dogs. And it's for beautiful little dogs, of course you want to help them. So please, donate. I'd like to say a uh, special thanks, of course, to... Uh, I was like, how, oh, that's some of the first people in the special thanks part is actually characters. But yeah, I'd like to spe say a special thanks to the entire Zanky Zero Discord. Um, for being awesome, to uh, my co-commentator. Thank you. And I would also like to say a massive uh, thank you to uh, both Speed Ones Live and No uh, No Holidays Allowed for allowing me to uh, run in the fine little uh, marathon. So there's a tiny little bit after after the credits, which I also like to have show off, and I'll it's. Not long, and considering the amount of time we've got, it'll be fine now. <laughs> but listen, I discovered the truth. I distinctly remember Rio telling me that one time. There's still one life left. That's right. The game didn't include the current life as part of the remaining count. If the extend machine was modeled after that game. The humanity counter must work the same way. Zero lives left doesn't actually mean zero. There's still one more person. This may just be wishful thinking. Hell, this could all be complete nonsense. But this is the last bit of hope I can leave for you. Keep searching. You're not alone in this world. Must be out there somewhere. That person is your last remaining friend. You think it's ultra climactic and they ruin it. <laughs> it's a massive shame. But at least her friend is uh, very uh, handsome. 
So he has that. She has that going for her, which is nice. She's also like ten years old, though. Good morning. May I ask your name? <laughs> My name is slightly crazy woman because the first thing that anybody does when they meet her is laugh. When she meets somebody, is she laughs. Sophie, or Sophie, I think, says, I don't think Sachka just hecking dying is a really good ending. It depends it, on how you feel about Sachka, I suppose. <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's much more that the entire sort of point of the ending is everybody is quite literally dying. So, it's like it would be a lot more filling, uh, fulfilling if it was actually that case. But they wanted to try and sequel, uh, sequel bait, and then... Oh, the, the Ascent Machine comes back, and it's like... What? What? Yeah. What kind of feels awkward about that is the implication. Very much so. Indeed. Uh... Especially for when you're properly playing through the game. It becomes... You become very attached to the characters, and then it just becomes kind of weird. So yeah, yeah. it's... Eh. <laughs> yes, we can. That's not the worst thing that they have in that in the slightest. The worst thing is with Zen, and I purposefully skip over all of that, and I'm not speaking about it because... Uh, and uh, then... Um, Girl of Gluttony is also kind of... Uh, as well. So yeah... That's actually it for me. Um, it was weird to say this quickly. <laughs> um, so I have no idea what on earth I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I'm just going to be saying again, thank you everybody for coming along. Please, please, please push forward uh, with some of those donations towards um, Go Rescue. Because every single pet deserves a home. Just as every single person deserves a home. So it would be lovely if every single animal, at the very least, has enough of an ability to enjoy life. And once again, it's coming up to Christmas, so if you're thinking of, oh, I should totally adopt uh, an animal as a gift, remember that animals are for life. They are not for... They are not the same as video games. You cannot just throw them away, then you're making to the problem. So if you're not sure if you're able to make that commitment, donate instead. Be it with money, like in this case, or with food or clothing, or just toys. Ask your local adoption centre what they need the most and get it for them. So thank you very much for coming along. I have been King McCut, and with me I have had... James Best. And I do hope everybody will come along again and... Uh, Enjoy the rest of the marathon. So yeah, cheerio, and thanks Goodbye. for all the fish. Alright guys, that was Anki Zero. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, up next here, we have a Celeste by King J, along with him running some Runner 3 again. Like, you're going to hear me say this a lot through the marathon. Um, pretty much to burn it probably till the end. But, again, we are raising money for Go Rescue, a nonprofit organization, help homeless dogs recover and find new homes. So, you know, you know, if you're, like, thinking, like, dang, dude, I'd probably go for some Starbucks. Think, think about, like, um, you could just... Take that five dollars and instead send it to a good cause. Um, just like you know, I'm not trying to guilt trip anybody here, but you know, it is something um, a lot of people kind of take for granted. Um, but you know, like, and when you donate those ten dollars, I mean, you know, it's not going to complete waste. Um, again, not only is it going to a good cause, but you are going to be making helping us meet incentives. Um, such as, 
Um, so I said pull it up here. So just like the run of three, we got the uh, the character bid war um, for whether uh, we're going to be do the commander video, uh, commander video or commander girl, um, which has zero dollars currently, along with Legend of Mana also has a name bid war for the character. So you can name it anything you'd like on there. Um, or you even got Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where you can choose between Pyra and Mithra. Um, we have a ton of incentives, so still need to meet them. So again, if you use explanation and donate, uh, explanation with incentives, stuff like that, um, you, you'll be able to see all this. Um, but up next, like I said, we have Celeste, and we are going to get um, that right out for you guys.
Alright guys, well it looks like our uh, current next runner is running a bit late. Um, that's okay, we are a bit ahead um, on time, so it's not that big of a deal. So we're just going to kind of have to wait it out here a little bit. Um, but uh, in the meantime, again, um, definitely check out the incentives. Um, check out the schedule too. You can, uh, if you use explanation point schedule, you can check out all the amazing runs. Again, this was a very hard list to figure out. Um, you know, it was, we had like, pretty sure it was like over 200 hours of submissions and we had to, to cram that out. We had to like at least cut at least about a hundred and uh, like we had like we needed 108 essentially with setup time um and with that it looks like we actually got a donation um so might as well go ahead and, um okay uh this is um we got 15 dollars from anonymous uh put the secret um put to secret of evermore incentive f <laughs> like I, I assume that's f the secret boss uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for the donation. Um, so we will make sure to get that put with that. That asset actually meets the secret boss incentive for secret uh, secret of Evermore. So thank you so much for that donation. And with that, that is our second donation, guys. Thank you so much. Keep those coming. Those help a lot. Um, But like I said, uh, you can use exclamation point uh, donations and donation to also donate if you'd like to yourself. Uh, exclamation point incentives. Check out all the incentives we have. Uh, and as again, exclamation point um, schedule to check out the schedule. Um, so we have a lot of amazing runs. Um, I'm just trying to fill air here, um, essentially, um, besides just having music. So, but um, I'll go ahead and let you guys get back to listening to the music.
you, you know, it's, it's a great time when you can chime in at the end of a song and then just go right into like an amazing song. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm just like funny. And so here we got $20 from Chris Naga uh, saying, let's do this. Thank you so much for that $20, Chris. Um, so, uh, if you want that $20 to go anywhere, make sure you use that explanation point donation, uh, explanation point incentives. Um, let us know where you'd like those $20 to go. Um, there's still a lot of places that money can, there, there's still a lot of donations that we need to, um, meet. So let us know. But, uh, I've heard that, like, again, do, uh, get those donations in. You know, they have they help out a lot. Anyway, go back listen to the amazing music. Jeez, I, I can't get a rest here, can I? All right, so we have another $10 from Anonymous for 2x damage on Majora's Mask. So that, that is for the Majora's Mask uh, randomizer. So he's going to be doing 2x damage. Um, thank you so much for that donation. Um, I don't know if that quite meets it. It does, actually. It does quite, it does meet it. Um, so thank you guys for that. So with that, the Majora's Mask 2x damage incentive is met. Um, again, there's still plenty of more donation incentives to come around, such as the Bid Warfare Runner 3, um, you know, character bid, uh, name Bid for the, the character in Legend of Mana, Pyra vs. Mithra. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of incentives. Um, again, uh, we're just starting on the marathon. You guys are starting hot. So, um, you know, you guys are doing amazing. Uh, anyway, get back to the music and hopefully I'll get a second. <laughs> You guys don't 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 stop on my behalf though. Please keep in with the donations. All right, we got five dollars from King Mount. Um, so I was planning on on getting uh, Chinese takeout today, but the money I spend on that can get uh, too much. Uh, too can get too much. Better causes, uh, including making me cry. <laughs> Poor King. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for the five dollars. Uh, let me know if you want that five dollars to go anywhere on the incentives list. Um, <coughs> Oh, it's King Emo Cut. My fault. Um, but yeah, let, let me know if you want that to go anywhere on the incentives list. I will make sure to get it put there. But anyway, we're going to continue listening to this amazing music while we try to figure out where our king is. King J.
You guys keep just rolling in with these things. Thank you. I got, um, okay, I'm going to butcher this and I apologize for this. Uh, Yari Deki? You can you can yell at me if I miscorrect it. But as donated five dollars, his um says, here's a little bit towards making Crow and Man cry on difficulty five. Oh, saving the puppers too. Thank you guys so much for the. Uh, oh, I got it first try. Sweet. Um, thank you guys for thank you so much for the uh, five dollars. Let me know if you want the, those five dollars to go anywhere. Uh, again, we got plenty of incentives to, to meet, um, so do let us know. Um, you can let me know uh, in DM or you can just say in chat. That's fine. But uh, uh, again, we're still having difficulties here. We might I might just have to find someone that can just replace King J. Um, because uh, we are sitting here for a little bit way longer than we should be. Anyway, we're going to get back to the music and I'm going to figure something out. <laughs> Apologies for uh, all you uh, headphone users. I also am a headphone user, <laughs> but, um, but we have um, we have five dollars from Utopic Unicorns. I turned down my mic. Hopefully, it's not as crazy as it was before. Um, Utopic Unicorns donated five dollars. Says, can you please turn up the music so that people with headphones don't get a jump scare when someone starts talking? I apologize. I didn't realize it was scaring everybody. Yeah, but I will turn up the music. Um, but the music, like, I'm not sure why the music is so loud uh, or so low on the Discord. I will try to fix that for you guys. But uh, uh, let me know if you want those five dollars to go anywhere on, on the incentives list. Make sure you like, and share incentives. You can check them out. 
But uh, yeah, we're already at seventy dollars, guys. That is, you guys are insane. We just we've only done one run, and you guys are already hitting seventy dollars. You guys are crazy. Thank you guys so much. as I was about to give up
All right, guys. Um, it looks like our runner uh, King J has literally just disappeared on us. So uh, we are getting some backups uh, set up right now to fill in. Um, but again, thank you guys all so much for these donations. You guys have been amazing. Um, um, but we're going to be having to fortunately have to fill up about three hours. Um, thankfully, a couple of people have been able to step up. But um, here we're soon we're going to have the runs up. So give us, guys, just a moment and we'll have this right out.
There is a planet on the other side of the ring. We're going to make sure it's safe. 